Dr. Rachel Ross, one of the physicians of the Emmy-nominated daytime program, The Doctors, speaks with RealUrbanNews.com. I'm Michael Real. With Dr. Ross, I discuss vaccination, health care, and wellness in the African-American community. Dr. Rachel, how excited are you The Doctors nominated for an Emmy? You know, I'm very excited. The first time that the Emmy came about, I wasn't on the team, so now I'm a new member of the team, and we've got this Emmy nomination, so I'm super excited. What is it like being a part of this professional, if you will, medical staff on television? You know what? I never realized the impact that it was having until one day I was in the airport in Atlanta, and I'm walking through the airport, and I hear, girl, do you think you're hiding? And I'm like, well, what, what? She was like, I know exactly who you are. And you know, it was a sister. She was an older lady. And she told me how important and how good it felt to have me on that show. And so through talking to her, it was kind of the first time it hit me that, that I have this national audience and that, you know, black women are feeling some type of way seeing me up there and that you know you you hear your mama and your patients and the people in the hometown but when you get out and really start to feel how people are experiencing you being on the show that's when it really starts to count so speaking of the hometown you come from a line of doctors your family uh, is truly pioneering and leaders in the medical Talk about your dad and his practice. Oh, yes. So my dad, you know, I come from a family. Of, we practice medicine in Gary, Indiana. That's actually still where I practice medicine. Mm -hmm. And so my dad started the clinic uh, years ago. He, uh, I want to say 45 years ago he started the clinic. And he's still the medical director. It's my brother, my sister who uh, passed away a sickle cell recently. She was part of the staff. And my mom is the office manager. So we, we always say it's our family treating your family. You know, being rooted in the community like that and kind of having that background and then to be able to be on the stage like the doctors and to expand your audience and really, I mean, honestly, every day I go and before I go on air, I ask, you know, I ask God, I'm like, just give me the strength to say what it is that I need to say and give the information that I need to give to make everybody stronger and better. So I feel very connected to medicine in that particular way but it's interesting my dad always tell tells everybody that i was the hardest one you know like i wanted to rehab houses and i dropped out of medical school once or twice you know so sure, now to sure. be in this position uh -huh. it's kind of funny so it makes for great dinner conversation what message do you want to uh, relay to america specifically black america about our health and our well-being sure you know what i think the biggest message that i could in part, and this is from me being the family medicine physician, this is from me being in the grocery store, this is from me having friends, this is from me being on the TV show, is that what you eat is everything. I mean, like everything starts from what we're putting in our body. And I think, you know, we hear people talk about processed food, and I think some of us get it wrong. So then I'll have friends like, well, all I'm eating is tofu and vegetable. Well, tofu's a processed food okay. too. <laughs> so, so really trying to eat as close to the earth as possible, meaning something that was grown, that's green, you know, it could even be purple, but coming from the ground and the sure. earth and drinking as much water as we possibly can would really make a huge difference, not even in just our physical health, but sure. in our mental health too. And I, I really think that that needs to start a little earlier. You know, it hurts me to go to the grocery store and see some of the stuff that we're putting in the car. Sure, sure. And you know, I can't be that nosy doctor that's like, now, you know this isn't good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I have I no make excuse. It home. No. <laughs> <laughs> On a serious note, um, you are part of this documentary that uh, has caused quite a stir. It was uh, called Vax, it was part of the Tribeca Film festival, and then it became unapart. You're right. They, they Tell pulled us about it that. at the last minute. I think this vaccine debate has been going on in the country for years, and I think what's happened is I remember when I was in med school, when they taught about autism. Autism was a small paragraph that basically told us that it happened. As, it, it was something that was happening to women over the age of 35 who were white women, and they were affluent. And that was that. So now fast forward to now when we're seeing rates that almost look like one in 50 boys are becoming autistic for some reason or having some type of autistic spectrum disorder. To me, I want some answers. And so 
Um, unfortunately, what didn't make the news this year, which I thought should have, is that the CDC had a whistleblower that really came forward, Dr. Thompson, and came forward and said, you know, we have some data here about the MMR vaccine in African American boys that nobody is talking about, that we actually kind of threw away sure. so that no one would know. And basically what it was saying is that African American boys, if they get the MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine before three years of age, that there is an astronomical increase in the amount of autism that we're seeing. And so, you know, Dr. Thompson sent the information to all of our organizations that are supposed to be on the forefront of the African American community, but you don't hear anybody talking about it. Nobody seems concerned about it. And for me, I challenge the CDC, the Senate, the Congress, and everybody that we deserve answers to why this is taking place, particularly when states like California are trying to make it mandatory sure. for vaccination to take place. To me, it needs to be a parent's choice, there needs to be some education, and we need some answers as to why there's an increased risk and rate of autism in the African American community. You know, just sitting here chatting, it kind of takes me back to our history and the Tuskegee Absolutely. experiment. Absolutely. And um, the Tuskegee experiment was kind of like, okay, well, we have these gentlemen who have syphilis. Instead of treating them, let's see what happens. Let's see them go back into the community and give it to their partners. And let's just watch and wait and see what happens. So for me, knowing that we come from that type of place with our government and vaccines, it hurts to know that as a family medicine physician, the same vaccines that I'm supposed to be giving to protect might, in fact, be causing harm. And that really, really is a problem and we need to make more noise about it. Sure. We need some answers and I want more people to know. I'm, I'm a new mom myself, so now I'm at the point where I have to make decisions about my daughter getting vaccinated. And to me the data is very clear and I want everybody else to understand that they need to look at it and become educated too and make your own decision about whether or not these are this is the way you want to continue with your children. We've talked about men. Let's focus on the African-American female. Yes. What are some of the challenges uh, your sisters are facing mm -hmm. across this nation? Well, you know, we're still facing the problem of HIV. You know, that's still a problem in the community. And I, I really think it has a lot to do with partner sharing. It just is, you know. Whether or not you're knowingly sharing your partner with someone else or you're just happy to be number one instead of number three or number two. Okay. It's a problem. So the HIV rate continues to escalate. Heart disease is always going to be our issue and of course breast cancer. And I think with those three things in mind, it, it does go back to diet, but two, it goes back to knowing your worth right. and understanding that partner sharing isn't something that any of us should be subjected to and that you need to know your partner's status, you need to get tested together. And when something is amiss or isn't right, you know, you owe it to yourself to get in a better situation. When you talk about partners, you, you quoted as saying, knowing your status is sexy. Yes, and it is. Because knowing your status, you can walk around with your head up high, knowing where you stand on the side and the forefront of HIV and AIDS. And you can use that information to get your friends to go get tested, to get your family members to go get tested. Because it continues to be something that disproportionately affects underprivileged communities and younger communities. So making sure that you're educating your nieces and your daughters and your, you know, and, and just passing the message on that get, getting tested and protecting ourselves has to be a big part of what we do every day. When we look at and talk about HIV, we know there, uh, and you helped me with this, there's a, a, a medicine on the market now that uh, has shown results where it slows HIV between male gender partners. Sure, I think what you're referring to is PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis. And basically what it is, is for people who are in high risk situations, and they consider high risk to be men who are having sex with men, or, and I consider high risk to be African American women who are in relationships where their partners are sharing or they're sharing. So those are high risk situations. You can speak with your doctor about whether or not you fit the statistic of someone who would need to be on PrEP. So what PrEP does is it's a basically a pill that you take every day that is the exact same medicine that you would be taking if you were HIV positive, but what it's designed to do is keep your 
your levels in your body to the point that if you did get insulted with the virus, that it would take care of itself automatically. It's kind of, I almost want to think of it as like a vacuum cleaner that's running all the time. I think what you have to keep in mind though is that it is a medication, it does have side effects, it, it, it has been known to cause kidney problems, and as African Americans we already suffer a lot of kidney disease. So I think anytime someone comes to you and says, well, we can prevent you from getting a disease, just take this pill every day, sure. that, that might not necessarily be the route that we all want to take. I'm a big proponent of prevention sure. and making decisions that are going to decrease your risk of, of contracting HIV. Do I think the whole community needs to be on medication every day? Absolutely not. But I do think in some cases, particularly if you have a partner and you know your partner has HIV, PrEP is perfect. That's a perfect situation because I think we run, we, we're missing the point if we always talk about HIV in terms of someone else having sure. it. Sure. Because our family members have it, some of our partners have it, some of our parents have it. So if you think of it like that, then PrEP makes a little more sense. But to just throw the pill out there and tell everybody to take it, nah, I think we're, we're, we're going it. down a, a mm -hmm. road that we don't want to travel down. On this show, uh, although entertaining, yes. It's informative, yeah. but it also takes a lot of responsibility. It does. It does. I mean, because, you know, this is just on a little lighter note. I remember one time we had a, a, a story about a young boy who was living in California. He bought a rat from the pet store. His grandfather bought a rat. He was so excited. Well, he caught a disease from the rat and passed away. So I'm on TV and I'm like, oh my God, well, who? This is terrible. And who would want a rat for a pet? I tell you, rats are so ugly. So I, you know, I do this little thing about the rats. I was in trouble with PETA for a whole year. Every website, every social media thing, the people were attacking me like, how dare you? You know, like, damn you, you talk bad about rats. So that was the one time I really realized that, you know, you have to be very careful what you say and what you put out there. But I do feel like I have a huge responsibility to make sure that the information that I'm providing is correct and that I've thought it through. I think I'm a little different than the average television doctor because I put my opinion in there. Sure. You know, like, I'm not just regurgitating facts. I'm putting an opinion on I'm telling you what I'm going to do for myself, what I'm going to do for my family, and I think that's what takes and elevates it to a point where it's actually real instead of just textbook medicine. As we close, What's your hope for America in terms of getting us and keeping us healthy? Hmm. I think my hope for America is that we will not only take a, a little stronger initiative to make sure that we stay healthy, but to really pass that information on to our, our next generation and to understand too that our mental health and our physical health are directly connected and you can't have one without having the other. And you're enjoying motherhood. You look great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I am enjoying it. You know, it's funny. I'm one of those parents that just sits and looks at the baby. <laughs> oh, look, she's smiling. Well, it's probably gas. Oh, look, her hair grew overnight. You know, it's like oh, sure. it's, all these little things. But I'm totally enjoying it. So thanks for asking. Thank you for being gracious. Oh, thank you for having me. All right.